all along welcome to my latest video and a happy new year to everyone watching massive thank you to all of you for your comments support and special thanks to those who've subscribed to the channel hope you enjoyed the holidays and i'm looking forward to keeping you all entertained in 2023 subject for this video is a brand spanking new type 1 minibus which i'm going to try to make to resemble a camper it's a bit of a, a task to re deconstruct this one there are so many screws and things holding this together the base plate comes off easy that's just two screws which we're going to start putting in a tray lest they become lost wheels off chassis always a bit of uh, detail in the mold in there i'll probably do something with that later bumpers i'll have to come off with the aid of a scalpel there kind of molded on out comes the interior the interior's got two rows of seats because it's meant to be a micro bus but i'm taking one away and I'm going to create a bit of a cupboard in the corner, give it more of a look of a camper. Just staring inside, contemplating how it all comes to pieces. And stretching out and reaching for the help of a screwdriver. And the first thing that I come to try and undo won't budge. I'm pushing on it that hard, my hands are shaking and it just won't have it. I must have some strong little fingers at the welly factory. I was scratching my head and wondering what to do next. I see that removing the sunroof is a relatively simple proposition. So in order to keep things moving, I'll just pop that out. Some more studying on the most likely route to be able to get it apart. And having undone a few screws, the top section comes off. Nice little mouldy, nice and clean, but it turns out to be plastic. It's not a huge problem, just means scotch bright enough some of the paint so that I can uh, get a primer onto it. This door fought me all the way through. I think primarily it was held in place with the coat of paint that went on after the assembly. I think they dip these things, I don't think they actually spray them. But um, finally got it off. The door card's an easy enough proposition, just comes off with my fingernail. Uh, that's another little bit for the box. As you can see, we've got moulded in lots. It's got a high detail little model, this really. What a pleasant thing. The plan overall is to strip and repaint it. And I'm going to put uh, some candy paint on the bottom. And a very similar blue, a little bit more kind of metallic looking. And on the top, we'll have a coat of uh, what's fast becoming a favourite of mine, Sparkalescent White. I'll be in trouble when that runs out. I've put some base coat sealer dark on the chassis to kind of even it out a little bit, make it look a little bit less plasticky. And I'm just detailing the chassis rails here. I won't show you the whole process because it's quite time consuming. But it is just another little detail I like to throw in on these things. I do the rails, the gearbox, the, the prop shaft and so half shafts and so on and so forth. This just adds a little bit of extra dimension on these uh, slightly bigger trucks. I'm washing it here now with a copper which normally works quite well on black, but because it's primarily an airbrush paint that I'm using, it's taking a couple of coats to get a reasonable cover. So I've left that to one side now, and I'm putting, having primed the plastic coat, at the plastic on the top, I'm putting on a coat of uh, sparkalescent white. Doesn't unfortunately show up well underneath the light in, but when you see it in daylight 
it kind of looks a bit like icing sugar on the top of something. It's got that kind of pearlescent look about it. Reasonably happy with that. Another quick coat on the top. And then tilt just to make sure I've got it nice and even. Having pushed the sunroof back into place. Onto the interior now, which was a kind of a buff colour. I've removed uh, one of the rows of seats. And I'm just spraying the interior now into a with a with a, a Tamiya called Japanese Army Grey, which is funny because it looks kind of green to me, but it seemed an appropriate colour for the interior on the camper. Going on nice light coats on any runs or product failures or disasters in corners we can't get at afterwards. It's kind of a sage green look really I suppose. We'll be doing a bit more detailing on the interior but that'll be done with uh, with a paintbrush. Just want to get the bulk of this on with the uh, with the airbrush. The kind of primary colour that it's going to be. There's no point in painting the sides because they'll be kind of permanently inside the moulding when it's all put back together again. There won't be any of those parts visible. Steering wheel on this little cupboard that I've built for it. To give it a bit more of a camper look as I was saying. It's just simple construction plastic card. But it looks the part and does the job. Again, with the same sage green colour that's going to be the kind of primary colour of the interior. Building it up in nice light coats. satisfied with that. Moving on to the base of the vehicle now. I've been stripped it with nitromores and put a base coat onto it. It's now had a coat of silver in order to make the candy pop when it's applied. Candy paint basically is quite a thin Stained varnish, if you like, really, a thin stained, stained lacquer, and it needs a good reflective ground coat to make it work. This is the first time I've used this product. It's a JVR Top Candy, as this vehicle was actually painted before any of the uh, the Christmas specials that I've just done, but I couldn't. Produced it as it was a gift for somebody, I couldn't release the video till after the holidays. But this is my first time of using JVR Top Candy, and uh, I found it pretty good. I'm putting really light coats on because candy will run, it's extremely thin. And I'm putting light coats on and flashing it off with hair dryer in between coats. Just left that little bit in to kind of push the point home that if you just apply it neat and try and get coverage, it'll run. And we go in with the second one. With candy, you can just kind of build it up until you're satisfied with the overall finish, but you have to try and keep the coats even. 
as it'll look, if not, it tends to look patchy and uh, not a satisfactory finish at all. Well, there we are with two coats in and we're starting to, it's starting to even out a little bit now. Another bit of drying out action for you. And we're on with the third and final coat. Just to make sure it's even all around. As often happens with the uh, the lighting in the spray booth and the lighting in the area where I'm working, it doesn't really show the paint at its best. It really looks good in the daylight. I think it's the case with a lot of custom paints, they really pop under UV light the best. I'm just touching a few bits and giving it a finishing coat. Okay, that's the painting all done. Final flash off with the hot air gun. And then we're on to assembling all the multiple pieces. You can just about see the uh, little interior cupboard that I've made there. Next up is to fit the interior glass. A lot of windows in this little bay. I had a nice chance not to have to polish them all though and cover them in furniture polish to try and make them look decent. There's the beauty of taking a brand new thing apart, I suppose. Just a little bit of super glue to make sure it doesn't uh, wander off anywhere while I'm trying to reassemble. Give it a second to go off there, and as ever, a little hit with the zip kicker. Unfortunately, during the course of the filming, the camera slipped and I hadn't realised. It's pitched slightly forward, so for a few minutes now, my hands will be slightly out of shot. Not exactly what I would have wanted, but unfortunately, having put the car together, I couldn't go back. Push the two halves of the case back together again. It was just a simple little row of clips that lined up. And in with the interior. With that all lined up nicely. As you can see, I did go a little bit further with the detailing on the bottom of this chassis. Always like to do these things, so hardly anybody ever looks at the bottom there. Drop the wheels into place. And the bumpers to be secured. There we go, two little locators front and back on the chassis. I'll try and make sure we don't put the back one on the front and the front one on the back. the front one on and a bit more of the modeler's best friend pound shop super glue 
And while we're waiting for the glue to go off, I'd just like to thank you all for watching. If you don't subscribe already, do consider a subscription, hit the notification bell, and then you'll get updates as to anything new that's released. I'm very grateful to everyone that supported me during the course of the last 12 months. My numbers are creeping up very slowly, and I really do appreciate that. So we've got the chassis back on now. It's just held in place with a couple of screws. And that all it leaves me to do is to glue on the mirrors that you can see right at the bottom of the corner of the screen there. And add the number plates that we've made up for it. Just a last little tightening up on the screws. Put her over on the wheels. We got a roller, but I suppose it's hardly surprising since we started off with a brand new toy out of the box. And soon it'll be time to put it on the turntable and do the reveal. So there you are, what have I been up to with this one? Well, completely dismantled the car, every nut, screw, bolt and pin. Stripped the paint and repainted with a custom blue candy on the bottom and a sparklescent bright white on the top. Sparklescent bright white on the wheels. Stripped out the interior, replaced a row of seats because she was originally a microbus with a cabinet to give it more of the look of a camper. Fitted custom number plates, painted the, repainted the interior, put it all back together again. I really hope you enjoy your uh, custom made camper, Gary. I know there was a lot of love went into it from Hayley who had me, who commissioned me to make it for you. Hope you enjoyed the video, and to all of my regular viewers, hope you enjoyed it too. It's a little off the beaten path for me, but it was something I was asked to do as a Christmas gift. And overall, I don't think it's come out too bad. Well, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.